and we are armed. We say all praises be to the creator, all power to his people. In the name of Yahshua, the Black Revolutionary Messiah, I greet you, my brothers and sisters, in the spirit of truth and the words of peace. Shalom Aleichem. Giving a special salute to the Black Messiahs. Our motto is stop waiting for a savior and be one. Stop waiting for a savior and be one. We're on tonight, family, with the 2021 wrap-up. A lot of things happen in Durham. A lot of things have been going on in Durham across the country. So we're going to have a meeting tonight, the Black Messiah community, to talk about where we've been, where we're going. So it's been a crazy year, but we're blessed to still be here. But what we've been focusing on, really, is the violence in Durham the violence in Durham. There's been a lot of violence in Durham, a lot of shootings in Durham, but there are a lot of good things too. There are a lot of good things too. The Black Messiah community, I'm very proud of the work we've been doing. I'm very proud of the activities we've been involved in for the last year. And I'm going to bring the uh, members of the Black Messiah community on in a few minutes, but there have been a lot of happenings in Durham, but we have a lot of things going on, family, a lot of positive things we are looking forward to in 2022, a lot of things that um, programs we have in place. Uh, between our involvement in community centers. Uh, we're putting together a council of elders. So if you know anyone who has made a contribution, any of the elders who have made a contribution to Durham, who you think would be good for the council of elders, definitely give us a call. Definitely contact us, 919-972-8305. Bringing on our chief of staff, Sister Sharon. Sister Sharon, we're going to be live for a few minutes. Then we're going to go into private sec private session. But I wanted to talk to the community for a minute to talk about the things that we've done, the challenges we faced as a Durham community, and things we have looking forward to in 2022. Your thoughts, Chief of Staff? Yes, I think... Um... We've accomplished a lot in 2021, even though there was a lot of odds against us, but we persevered through. And I, I see a brighter day in 2022, and I'm very excited about the things that we have planned for 2022, especially with the um, elder council that we're going to establish. And I really, really think it's going to really benefit the young people a lot. Yeah, and I'm yeah, and the elder council, the council of elders, that is really something Durham needs. Yes. And not only doing Kwanzaa, you know, right. a lot of times they have a council of elder, the elders that walks through doing Kwanzaa, uh, and it won't happen this year because I just saw on their Facebook page they actually counseled counseled it, uh, the January first event. But you know, they have the council, they have the elders come through and everybody stands up for the elders. But we need to have that as a functioning group in Durham. That's right. Not, not just doing Kwanzaa because there's a lack of respect. And I think you've talked about it before. A lack of respect uh, between the generations. Pe the yes. young people, a lot of, I won't say all of them. But right. Some of the young people have lost respect for the older generation. So a council of elders will do a lot in Durham to stop these beefs exactly so that is the whole purpose of the council of elders they can mediate yes even even, even amongst groups right uh, groups who are fighting for the same thing we need mediators right you know we need to smooth things out you know right. we need a group of elders who we just sit back and say you're right elder we mm -hmm. need to work this out, Elder. So mm -hmm. it needs to happen amongst the youth, and it needs to happen, happen among uh, organizations as well. Are your thoughts? Exactly. I feel like um, everybody really can benefit from the elders because 
we we need to bring back a strong village in the black community. Mm -hmm. And it begins with the elder. We need to teach this generation how to respect elders again and to listen. That's the thing is to listen, mm -hmm. to hear what they have to say, because elders have a lot of wisdom that they can impart upon us. And I, I love sitting with them. Um, listening to different things. And so I'm really excited about, you know, helping spearhead that um, and get it kicked off here in Durham because it's very much needed. Mm -hmm. um, and especially in Durham, because we have a lot of rich history in Durham. Yes. And we have a lot of history that's not so rich. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a reporter today and she was like a young reporter, a college college student. And she was like, I didn't know that about Durham. I didn't know there was another side of, you know, to Black Wall Street because there's right. the rosy side that people talk about. Right. There's the activism side. And right. as you know, the activism side kind of sometimes clash with the rosy side. And we've talked about on this program. And there are a couple of books you can read. But like they say in Durham, the good old days weren't always good. That's and right. Until we admit to that, we got to, we'll never get out of this rut we're in because the youth have to know how we got here. It didn't start with them. It mm -hmm. started with mama, grandma, great grandma. So mm -hmm. the elders are really the only ones who can tell that story. That's right. And help us build back that foundation mm -hmm. because when you are building a house, you have to have a foundation or it's going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happened in the black community. The foundation of our community have fell apart. And we know through lots of things that made that happen mm -hmm. for it to fall apart. And so what we need to do is we need to get with our elders and seek wisdom mm -hmm. from them and to build back what we used to have we used to have a level of respect that was so high for mm -hmm. our elder people. You know, if a kid was doing something, they would stop whatever they were doing because they didn't want that elder to get on them, you know. And we need, to, we need to get back to that. A lot of these young people today, they don't know anything about that because they wasn't, you know, raised in that type of environment but we need to do it and i think we need to do it as soon as possible because we are losing too many young people for no apparent reason you know and we just we just can't keep losing our youth like that mm -hmm. indeed so we're going to bring on we were going to bring on she must have stepped off for a minute uh, we were going to bring on the field marshal, but I think she stepped off the camera for a minute. But yeah, uh, we have to. Uh, we have to do these things in our community to make things better. Let me see if she's there. <laughs> Sister Cheryl, you got okay. There you go. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> before we go into the, the private session tonight uh, and talk Black Messiah community business, I wanted to give people a chance to say anything they have to say about the community, Sister Cheryl, about things that are accomplished. Um, oh, let, let me start off with this. And you can talk about what you want to talk about, Cheryl. But one of the things I'm very proud of our field marshal, Cheryl Smith, is her dedication and involvement, heavy involvement in the community center. It's open up. I was there yesterday. Young people are coming through. Um, teenagers, the people you say you can't reach, you know. Um, and Reverend Corey with Community Builders, he's doing a great job with those young people. Mm -hmm. I was there. I saw it. Those kids that they say you can't reach, then they're going, yes, Mr. Corey. Mm -hmm. Corey's like, um, he told one brother, I got to get you a belt. Yes, Mr. Corey, I got I got, I got, to put a belt on. So these <laughs> are the young people that are talking about, well, we can't reach those young people. They're in that community center. Mm -hmm. And all they wanted was a snack and somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. I saw it with my own two eyes. So Sister Cheryl, um, your, your, your words. 
Uh, yeah, you're right. They come in there. They just want somewhere to go, somewhere safe to be. Mm-hmm. And they don't have to act all tough. They can relax. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, and Cor just sit and speak with them. I mean, nobody judge them or anything. We just let them be them. Yeah, and you can tell. You can tell they. that's all they want is somebody to um, to feel, to let the guard down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Feel safe. If you walk around here acting like you scared of these children, they're going to be bad to you. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to stay in tough. I mean, I mean, they just kids and they want to be able to be kids. Mm-hmm. And you hit because out there in, in, in the environment, unfortunately, that the powers that be have created and Spitfire can talk about that when she comes on later. But the powers that be have created this atmosphere they didn't create it but yeah. you know, it's teaching them they gotta be tough and they gotta you know be acting hard all the time mm-hmm. it's good to have a community center when they can feel at ease yes sir. and just be kids and, and they just come in and out that back door when they feel like it come in speak and just go and be kids mm-hmm. they get their snacks they stay and talk go to the games you know, nobody say anything mm-hmm. just sit and talk mm-hmm. and laugh they, and they make you laugh <laughs> You're not gonna be around them and not lay. Right. <laughs> but yeah, you just you can't act like you're afraid of them. They're just kids. But we're but, so proud of you, Phil Marsha, for the work you did and the dedication you did. Yes. What's your yeah. vision for the community center for the for the next up for the upcoming year? Well, um it's ready to start it. Um well, you know, with COVID, we gotta got try to be safe for everyone. But, um, you know, get the computer layup going and, you know, just start bringing in the programs now after everybody get through the holidays. So you need to step back and let people celebrate the holidays and take a break. So next week we got to get to work. <laughs> indeed, yeah. indeed. Let's we gotta see. Get, we got to get back to work. Sister oh, and Joyce we're going to have a uh, Martin Luther <laughs> King celebration on the 17th of January up there. We'll try to have it outside, you know. Okay. You know, bring the you know bring this, um the history into the community to the people instead yeah. of having it somewhere else where they can't get to it and we don't know anything yeah. about it till it's over with. Yeah. I mean, we have to bring this stuff back to us, back to them, so they'll know where they came from. They don't know if we don't bring it to them. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. There's a lot of things that go on in Durham. The people who mm-hmm. need to be there, they either can't get there, they don't, or most of the time they don't know what's happening. Yeah, or you have to be a member of a church to sometime to know. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we just bring it back in the community, you know, for the people that can't get to it. And hopefully, anyone want to sing, speak, whatever, we more than welcome to come and join us. It'll be at three o'clock in the afternoon outside of the community center. Mm-hmm. Wrapped up, stay safe because of COVID. So we we never know where this COVID thing gonna take us. So, like Paul said, we have to step back a little bit and wait. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It might be gone by then. Yeah, yeah. It was the holiday, so we got. We know we're gonna get. We're gonna have a problem with it after the holiday. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Now, Sister Joyce, Joyce said, "Hey, y'all, put little one to bed, so can't stay long, but want to come to show love. Appreciate y'all. Yes, show has inspired me and many others. That's from Little Joy, Sister Joy." But uh, we appreciate you too, Joy, and all the work. Yep. You yep. And we appreciate you too, Paul, and all the work you do. Mm-hmm. And you too, Sharon, and all the work that you do. You may be in the background that people don't know about, but you're working hard too, sister. <laughs> yeah, that's the chief. But I, 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 I everybody. The chief of staff is like the hardest job. Yes. <laughs> I said, Sharon, you're going to be able to do it? I don't know. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I need you though. She's done a great job as chief of staff. Because if you don't have a good chief of staff, Sharon's the one, let, let me say this publicly. Sharon's the one who helps keep all everything in motion. Because <coughs> I'm going this way, I'm going that way. Cheryl's, you know, the field marshal, she's always out there. So Sharon's <coughs> the one who's keeping things in motion. And let's see. Bringing on Sister Tammy. Sister Tammy, we're live. And then what we're doing, we're going to be live for a few minutes and then we're going to go into closed session after we go live. But I wanted us to talk to the community and tell the community the things we got going on going into 2022. 
Uh, we bring it in, Sister Fit Fire. Oh, there you are. Mine's playing tricks on me. Bring Thank you, everybody. Sister <laughs> Hello, baby. Who is our Happy minister. holiday. Happy holidays. <laughs> <laughs> and Tammy is <laughs> Sister Tammy is heading off from hood to hood campaign. <clears throat> from hood to hood yeah. means hope out of despair. Hope out of despair. And what we're trying to do, because Tammy has been real instrumental and connected with different <laughs> communities. Our thing for 22 is let's bring these various communities together. You know, because a lot of these things that are considered gang fights are really just communities not getting along. Mm -hmm. So that's why we bring Tammy in from hood to hood so we can get these communities together. Let's have a conversation. Let's squash these beef. Let's bring them, if there are disagreements, let's bring them before the elders. Sister Tammy, you have any words? Not right now. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Tammy, hey, hey, how y'all doing tonight? Hey, how y'all doing? How you doing, Tammy? Fine. <laughs> okay, and we have um, Sister Spitfire, <coughs> the A Sister Sharon, our Minister of Information for the Black Messiah Community. Sister, do you have any words <laughs> about things you've seen us doing in 2021 and things we we hope to accomplish in 2022? Mm, I'm just excited because um, it seems like things are picking up, um, like, you know, things are coming together, knock on wood, um, as far as, you know, Cheryl pushing for the community center and it opening, Ashley having her community center and just, you know, more people starting to become aware. I was really, really encouraged. Um, after we talked to the four young people, yes, uh, oh, yeah. the day before yesterday, Monday. yeah, and just um, the interest that they um, had in the movement coming together and possibly wanting to be a part of that, and no, just knowing that they were going to share that information. Um, sometimes it just takes one person, and that one person might share it with four people, and so forth and so forth. So I'm really excited about that finally starting to manifest itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, what you didn't see on camera Thursday, I mean Monday, is a group of young people came up when we had our Kwanzaa gathering, and mm -hmm. they were so glad to see a bunch of black, a group of black people. They walked up on us and said, oh, black people. Yeah. They <laughs> so they walked up and they said, oh, black people. And we start talking about Kwanzaa. We start talking about organizing. But that was real powerful. Yeah. Well, that's, mm. that's something else we got to talk about going into 2022. Why are black people, and we've talked about it here. Why does it seem black people are ashamed to go downtown like we don't belong there? I mean... I just they think feel the like energy, right? You know, and they feel like it's nothing down there for them. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yep. And I think that's by design too. Yes, right. it is mm -hmm. definitely. I mean, it's one thing to say you can come downtown, but it's a whole nother thing to make make you feel welcome. Welcome, mm -hmm. right? Because um, I, you all can speak on this too. The people I talk to in Durham. When we were having Tammy, when we were having our um, Wednesday night gatherings, you know, they would say, you know, um, you know, why I want to go downtown, and we say, because it's your downtown too. And they would tell me, well, I haven't been downtown since I had to pay my electric bill ten five years ago. <laughs> but you go downtown and you do not see that many people. You do not see that many black people downtown. So that's one of the things we got to look into in 2022. So let's see. Sister Joy said, yes, everyone doing awesome work. Sharon, Sharon, Tammy, Cheryl, everyone. So mm -hmm. shout out again to Sister Joy. So 
-hmm. We're getting ready to go into our closed session and get off the live and talk amongst ourselves. But before we go into the closed session, this is, is there anything else anybody wants to tell the community about things planning we're planning for 2022? Okay. If nobody, if everything's been said, we are going to go into closed session. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And as always, we leave you with the Black Messiah motto, stop waiting for a savior and be one. Okay, hold on, fam.